Now you mentioned Nas. Uh, Nas mentioned in a in an interview that the two of you spoke about Bernie Sanders. Yeah. So explain to me what led up to that talk and how that talk went. Man, I'm honestly just, you know, I'm impressed by Sanders' policy and what it could potentially mean for working class people, period, but in particular, working class black men. I support his policy because of how it affects working class people, how it affects lower middle class people, poor people, and how it affects black men in particular. Black men are targeted in this drug war. He plans to end that. He's planning on giving us what Obama really wanted to give us, full health care, like I can't turn away from that. So when I have an opportunity to talk to Nas, to talk to 2 Chainz, to talk to Big Boy, to talk to T.I., I tell all my friends who will listen about Bernie Sanders, I'm like that nagging old lady on the block who's talking to you about elections are coming. I absolutely am, because I know if one of these brothers is, is open enough to see that, wow, logically this person can help my community, that they'll give an endorsement. So Tip is giving an endorsement, Big Boy is giving an endorsement, Bun B, Nah, Scarface has worked a phone bank. You know, and, I, and I'm, in, I'm excited by that, man. But why is it that historically you really haven't seen rappers get involved in presidential races? Like, for example, like, in the whole time that I've been in hip hop, I feel like you have, you have been the most vocal rapper of all time in terms of presidential races. And, and you are not the world's biggest rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? The fact that, that you actually took it upon yourself means that so many other rappers have just remained silent the whole time. I mean, that's what people do. Rappers are just people. Okay. Yeah. Well, rappers no, but people. these are people with a, a tremendous amount of influence and reach. You have a tremendous amount of influence. I don't see you doing pundit work. And that's not an accusation towards you. That's just to say most people are not inclined to do it. I, for whatever reason, am inclined to do it, and I step up to that social responsibility. That's it. But I do think people are socially responsible to register to vote. I do think people are socially responsible to vote, and I do think people are socially responsible to push local politics. So even if you aren't visible, I encourage people to be involved locally because I know that what's helped ignite a passion. But you got to look at it, man. Rappers are black men. There are not a lot of opportunities for black men to make the type of money we make in rap, to make the type of money we make in entertainment, to have the type of opportunities we have. And a lot of times when you're given these opportunities, you're so busy focusing on ensuring that your life, the life of your family and loved ones is going to go right. You don't have time to check on the economic atmosphere of America. You don't have time to check and see what a candidate's foreign policy. You know, you don't really understand or hear that shit because your focus, like any other middle class human being in America, is acquiring wealth to better take care of the people you love. You know, for example, you saw in, in Jamaica, Bob Marley actually brought the two candidates together. Did yeah. you ever see that, the Bob yes, Marley documentary yeah, that I'm talking helped, about? And then they tried to assassinate him. Right. Well, I think before he did that, they tried to assassinate him. Yeah. But if you talk about someone on the stature of a Bob Marley in Jamaica, like imagine if Jay-Z really got involved heavily in politics. Drake really heavily got involved in politics. Like... Everyone said, okay, we're, we're really going to make sure that this particular candidate wins through everything that we could do. Yeah. You just don't see that in hip-hop. Yeah, I want to. You know, I, I, would, I hope that my stepping out on a ledge would cause others to. You know, there are many paths to freedom. There are some rappers who are going to back other candidates even. But I would hope that, that our class that can afford to would. And I'm going to tell you this too. It ain't for the top tier to always step out in front. And, and, and reason being, Jay is a hell of a rapper. He's a hell of a brand, one of my favorites. He's an incredible businessman. During the civil rights movement, you know what business people did? They donated money to the movement. Jay donated money to Black Lives Matter. They ensured that people who went to jail, who got out, had a bond waiting on them. I think that's the type of stuff we should expect out of our top tier people. You know, I think that it's time to stop requiring them to do what we're not doing. You know, just as regular folks, we are not politically active on a local level. As regular folks, we do not go to school board meetings. As regular folks, we do not go to our PTAs. As regular folks, we do not demand to be a part of the local, our local legislative process. As regular people, 
So why do we require this out of celebrities just because we worship them because they're famous? What I would like to see the celebrity class do in the African-American community is to help encourage or become the merchant class. I would like to know if I go on the TGI Fridays that it's owned by Rick Ross. I would like to know that if I'm shopping at the DTLR, it is owned by Ludacris. I would like to know that if I am buying said headphones, that it is partnered with a black person that is going to donate money back into historically black colleges and universities. I am politically aware and sophisticated enough to, to know that, you know, I can see you at the Martin Luther King Day, you know, parade. That's safe. But I don't necessarily have to have you on the streets burning down the city with me. But if I should burn down the city, I need you to pay for my lawyer. That's what we should expect out of them. You know, as someone who's, who's lived in the South uh, most of your life, oh, all your life, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your entire life. When you look at the visibility that police brutality has these days with social media, do you feel that it's different now it's, it's, than it was 20, 30 years ago? Or I think is it it's because worse. You think it's worse, or do you think just now that you have social media, you actually have an image and a video. No, it's, it's, it's worse because 20, 30 years ago, drug units were kicking our ass. You know, the Red Dogs were in Atlanta, they were kicking our ass. Now they're just what, murdering boys. What do you mean? What I mean is the drug units used to catch you and they'd kick your ass. They'd okay. kick your ass, take your drugs, make you walk home. Okay. You're right? What's happening, what's happening now? So you got your ass kicked, but you didn't get an arrest record. You got to go home, and if you were good kids, you realize this is not the life for me. If you were hard-headed, you went out there, got your ass kicked again, maybe went to jail. You get what I'm saying? Now, they're murdering. I was in South Carolina, and I was trying to convince a young man to, to, to take the stage and support Bernie Sanders. And I, and I sat on this college campus, and I talked to this, an, this is an adult man. He said, Mike, I'm, 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 you know, I support him. I'm voting for him. He said, but to be honest with you, man, when y'all leave town, who's going to protect me? I said, what you talking about? He said, man, did you see the video? In the video, the policeman said, get your license. He turned around to get his license, and the police began shooting him. As he laid on the ground, he asked him, what did you shoot me for? You reached for something. You told me to get my license. Right. Well, we actually posted that video. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. So his question hit me for real. This is an adult man. This man is crying in front of me. I don't have no answers for him. You get what I'm saying? So when you ask me how's it now, it's worse. It ain't just that cameras out there. You have police who for 20 years have lived under the culture that this particular person, this particular person is a super predator. Think about the mentality that, that puts you in. Because it's more than just a thing that got said. It's an atmosphere and an attitude that has come. Policemen enter their work now as though they're going on a hunt. Policemen are strapping up as though they are paramilitary and they are hunting. And thanks to shit like stop and frisk in Harlem, you are given a target to hunt. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there, there in live, there you go. So is it, was it, is, it, is it worse than 20 years? Absolutely it's goddamn worse. It's worse because you view me as an animal to be hunted now. You view me as a predator. Super at origin. You don't view me as a human being. I'm a fan of Drake. I'm a fan, fan of the idea of Drake, so no disrespect against Drake. What do you mean by the idea of Drake? What does that mean? Meaning that if he has a ghostwriter, he's an idea. He's not meaning that it's, it's a perception created that he's not really writing the lyrics. And it's a, it's, yeah, it's just like an, here, let's, let's, let's make this in the factory and put it out. I'm just on top of my game right now, Vlad, and uh, I'm just getting blessed. I'm booked four or five times a week, six to 75 K a show, man. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm winning right now, man, and I'm just steady trying to increase my hustle.